Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News for this Thursday, the first day of August 2024. And as always, the last few hours have seen a number of stories come across the wire that are very important for you and I to understand as we see the world moving closer and closer to the prophesied events that the Bible tells us about with respect to the coming of Jesus Christ and the events that will precede it. All right, we have more information now on the elimination of the leader of Hamas, Haniyeh, when he was taken out on Tuesday in Tehran. The leader of Hezbollah spoke today, Hassan Nasrallah, and he said, wait for our response. You will cry a lot. At the same time, the Israeli defense spokesman Hagari said, the military is on high alert. We're ready for whatever you throw at us. And Israel is also working, we're told, on a defense coalition, similar to the one that happened in April when Iran threw everything at them, the missiles, the rockets, and et cetera. And they were thwarted by the Israelis and, of course, the other four nations that helped them. Now, also, as the Bible indicates, former Ambassador David Friedman says Israel is treated like no other nation, something we've come to expect. All right, let's look at the stories. Headline number one, here's a report. The decision to kill Hania was made because he was an obstacle to the hostage deal. And this is interesting. A new report on the assassination of Hamas leader in Tehran says the bomb used to kill him used AI technology and it was detonated remotely by Mossad agents. And Mossad, of course, is the Israeli Secret Service. New details continue to emerge from the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Hani in Tehran on Tuesday night. Two officials confirmed to Axios correspondent Barak Ravid the earlier report from the New York Times that Hania was indeed killed by an explosive that had been planted in the room where he had been staying some two months before the assassination. In other words, they were waiting for him to return. According to the latest report, Israeli intelligence learned which room Hania stayed at during each of his visits to Tehran and planted an explosive device that featured artificial intelligence technology. The device was then detonated remotely by alleged Mossad agents in Iran after they received word that Hania was indeed in the room. The report also stated that the American government had not been informed of the assassination ahead of time. One source stated that Prime Minister of Israel Benjamin Netanyahu made the final decision to have the Mossad assassinate Hania and that the efforts were to achieve a deal with Hamas to free the 115 hostages still hid in Gaza was one of the key considerations. Now, this is interesting because we're told by some of these weird news outlets uh, that uh, Hania was a moderate there. He, he was, you know, not wild like uh, Sinwar or D for one of those other characters. Uh, Again, uh, according to the source, Hania was seen as a hardliner in the negotiations, and it was determined that removing him would remove an obstacle to a ceasefire deal, despite the pragmatic face, pragmatic face that Hania attempted to present to the name mainstream media. Hania presented a pragmatic face to the mediators, but internally inside Hamas, he led a hard line, the source said. So this is very interesting. In other words, they've been waiting for him to show up again in Tehran. They planted the bomb some two months ago when they found out he was in the room he always stays in. They, uh, you know, the bomb was remotely detonated and Hania is no more. And again, the reason stated is that he seems to be one of the main obstacles to the uh, some peace agreements of hostage release for Israel and Hamas, even though he presented this face of being very moderate and, and very, you know, uh, level headed. Instead, he was really uh, one of the ones that was pushing for hard line all the time. And so this is interesting. And again, we've had a number of different stories come out yesterday and today from news organizations, Sky News Australia. There was a couple others that talked about Hania being this moderate Leader, I think CNN did, did a story like that. Now, he wasn't moderate at all. He was There's no such thing as a moderate terrorist, by the way. And so he's gone, and um, they decided to make this decision. Well, we'll see what the results will be. All right, headline number two. Now we have the spokesman, the leader of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, making a speech today. And here was his punchline. Wait for our response, because you will cry a lot. In a speech delivered during the funeral of Hezbollah military commander Fuad Shakur, Hezbollah Secretary General Saeed Hassan Nasrallah described the recent attack on Dahia, that's the area in, in uh, Lebanon and Beirut, as an aggression, not just an assassination. Nasrallah firmly rejected any responsibility for the incident in Majal Sham, stating, we categorically deny any responsibility for the incident in Majal Shams and are brave enough to admit, admit it, it if we made such a mistake 
and our internal investigation has confirmed that we are not responsible for what happened. I wonder how long his nose grew when he said that. Anyway, he criticized the Israeli accusations, asserting the Israeli enemy has not provided any evidence of our responsibility, but rushed to accuse us to uh, rushed to accuse us, aiming to exonerate exonerate the Israeli army and incite tension. And we have evidence that the Israeli interceptor missiles fell on Acre and other areas. Again, he's lying. The evidence is very clear. The weapon that was you know was detonated there in um, that Druze village was only manufactured, made in Iran. It was one used by Hezbollah. And as we talked about earlier that day, Hezbollah basically took credit for the different uh, bombings in the area there. And then when they found out this thing had happened at the Druze village where 11 young people or 12 young people were killed, they said, no, that was not us. So anyway, um, speaking, he also acknowledged uh, the role of the Druze leaders in Lebanon and Syria, saying the awareness and firm positions of a group of Druze leaders in Lebanon and Syria helped suppress a strife. In other words, supposedly the Druze um, leaders in his country uh, stopped it from being some type of riot against Hezbollah and Nasrallah. Regarding the broader conflict, he emphasized the aggression against Tahiya is not a response to what happened in Majal Shams, but rather part of the war and a response to the support from the southern Lebanese front. And we do not mind paying the price because we entered the battle according to our beliefs in justice. Uh, guy keeps lying everything he says. He further stated the battle is major and has entered a new phase, surpassing the support front. Uh, Iran views the situation as an attack to its sovereignty, prestige, and honor because Hania was a guest there. All I have to say to the Israelis is laugh a little now because you will cry a lot later. On the anticipated response, Nasrallah warned, the enemy should anticipate our inevitable response and our response will come through the days, nights, and on the battlefield. We are seeking a genuine and well-considered response, not a mere symbolic one, and we are looking for real opportunities. Now, some people think it could come as early as Friday. There's the funeral tomorrow, and I think it's in Qatar for uh, uh, Hania. And so after that is uh, completed, it could be very well be the response from Iran, Hezbollah and others will take place. We don't know. But this brings us to our third headline. Obviously, the Israeli military, the IDF, is on high alert. And that's what the spokesman Hagari uh, told us today. IDF spokesman Daniel Hagari said that other than the elimination of Fuad Shakur in Lebanon, the IDF did not strike anywhere else in the Middle East that night. IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Hagari answered questions on Thursday regarding Israel's involvement in the elimination of Hamas political bureau chief Ismail Haniyeh. Other than the elimination of senior Hezbollah leader in Lebanon, we did not conduct any airstrikes that night anywhere in the Middle East, Hagari stated at a press conference marking the war's 300th day. And that turns out to be true. There was a bomb they planted two months earlier, and that's what killed uh, Haniyeh. Anyway, amid the security tension and threats by Iran and Hezbollah to respond to the elimination of Haniyeh and Shakur, Hagari emphasized there is no change in the home front command's defense policy. We are taking all steps to ensure security, and they certainly are. We're keeping our ear and ear to the ground. According to him, the protection is not hermetic, and it certainly is. And there's, certain, there's a lot of areas, unfortunately, in Israel, which are not protected by any incoming bombs, drones, or whatever, missiles. Therefore, everyone should follow the guidelines. In other words, when you hear that sign that says red alert, you get to the shelters right away. Now, what's also interesting, our fourth headline Israel is working on a defense coalition ahead of the Iranian attack. Uh, this will, They will take action in case that Iran attacks again like they did in April. Israel is working to ensure that the defense coalition will take action in case of this attack. This is from Khan News in Israel. Likewise, the defense establishment is preparing for the possibility of Iranian launches at IDF bases in central Israel as well. In other words, they don't know exactly where they're going to hit, but they're preparing everywhere. The officials fear a non-precision missile hitting a civilian target, but at the moment, there are no special instructions for the home front. On Thursday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is expected to talk on the phone with U.S. President Joe Biden about the expected retribution from Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas, among other things. And that phone call did, was made. We haven't heard anything yet about the results from it. Israel is expecting the Iranian response to come in the coming days, passes possibly as early as this weekend, as Ismail Haniyeh's funeral on Friday in Qatar, and after meetings held since the elimination of, of, of officials of the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps and the Iran military, as we also reported today. 
To be cautious, Israel's aerial defense array raised its alertness level immediately to prepare for an attack that may occur before that. Israel is expecting Iran to launch ballistic missiles and cruise missiles and drones, along with simultaneous launches by Shiite militias in Lebanon, Yemen, Syria, and Iraq. In other words, all the coalition there, all these uh, people that are working with the uh, snake, Iran, the head of the snake, are going to be joining in on this too, including Hezbollah, Houthis, Iraq, and the uh, terrorists in Syria. So it's going to come from everywhere, it seems, and they're ready for it. And like we said, if this takes place, it's going to be very, very messy. There are going to be a lot of civilian casualties on both sides, sadly, and it's not going to be a very pretty sight, but it seems to be inevitable. And like we said, we'll keep you posted the more we know about this. Now, our last headline is one that really hits home with what we talk about here every day on Breaking News. If you're new to us, Breaking News does not just do news stories. It only does news stories that have something to do with what the Bible says that our world will be like at the time of the end. And the time of the end, of course, is the second coming of Jesus Christ and a number of predicted events that will precede it. Ambassador Friedman says, no other civilized nation goes through this, only Israel. And this is the truth. Former ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, says he sees the determination of Israelis as the country faces the possibility of a large-scale Iranian and Hezbollah attack. Uh, he commented out of this on Thursday on the wait in Israel for a possible large-scale attack from Iran and its proxies, the terrorist organization, well, its proxy singular, the terrorist organization Hezbollah, and likely, like we said, several others. Um, I'm in Israel now with family, waiting for Iran's threatened attack, perhaps in conjunction with Hezbollah and the Houthis. The attack is retaliation for Israel's temerity in eliminating two Islamic radical leaders who oversee the killing of children and the rape of women, Friedman wrote in a post on X, formerly Twitter. He noted that three major airlines have already canceled flights in and out of Israel in fear of the threatened attack. Well, let me bring you up to date, uh, Ambassador Friedman. A lot more than three have done that. The two American ones, Delta and United. You've got Lufthansa. You've got uh, Turkey. It was a Turkish Airlines also. Got a number, about a half dozen at least airlines, if not more, have already canceled flights to Israel. In fact, there were Austrian Airlines. They were flying towards Tel Aviv. They stopped on the way and uh, refueled and turned around and went back to Austria. And so we're seeing basically a scramble for Israelis to get home right now that are out of Israel simply because the airlines are not flying there. Okay, so he said no one in Israel is deterred, even though the major airlines are, have canceled flights. Sure, some are frightened, but all are determined to defend the world's only Jewish state from the assault of the barbarians. Then he says no other civilized nation goes through this. None. Only Israel. It literally is the tip of the spear in the defense of Western civilization. One day the West will thank Israel for its defense of Judeo-Christian values. Certainly not today with the feckless leaders including those in America, who dot the landscape. But one day, Friedman stated. Well, what we see here, it's real interesting. These are three major fulfillments of last day's Bible prophecy, as we have documented. First, Israel still exists as a sovereign nation at the time of the end. That's our sign one of our book, 25 Signs Were Near the End, The Miracle of Israel's Existence. Second, they remain in the public eye. Not only do they exist at the time of the end, they're going to be in the eyes of the world, remain in the public eye. Sign six says Israel will constantly be in the world spotlight, and that's what's happened since the rebirth of the modern state of Israel in 1948. And third, they are treated like no other nation. They're despised and isolated by most of the world, and that fits sign number 21 of our 25 signs. There will be a rise in anti-Semitism. The entire world will be against Israel. So none of this, believe me, none of this is coincidental. If you want to find out what will take place at the time of the end, before the return of Jesus Christ, the answers are found in the Bible, the Word of God. We've documented these in our book, 25 Signs. We're near the end. It's found on our website, Educating Our World, as a free download under the subject of Bible prophecy, where we have some 12 books on the subject of Bible prophecy and 65 total books on Christian belief, what we believe, why we believe, and how to live the Christian life. We want you to be informed, like Paul told the Thessalonians so long ago. 1 Thessalonians 4.13, he says, we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about what's going to take place. 
And we're here every day to inform you the best of our ability to what the Bible says is going to happen, then report exactly what does happen. And it's cr incredible, isn't it, how it all falls into place. And we're not surprised by this. We're always amazed, but never surprised. All right, I'm Don Stewart. If something happens where, you know, a, a, a war does break out or the fighting, you know, does what we're afraid it's going to do, we'll be bringing it to you, uh, breaking in whenever this takes place. Until then, as always, please keep praying, trust in the Lord. And may the Lord richly, richly bless you in the meantime.